in the previous video we have saved the parameters of our random walk to a scriptable object so that we can save some presets and that we can reuse them across other algorithms. Now I would like to create in this video a very simple wall generator that will surround our floor with walls before we go further and implement the remaining algorithms. For now let's go to our scripts folder underscore scripts, right click, create and let's create a new c -sharp script, let's call it wall generator. Ok, let's open it up in Visual Studio. Generate. Now this will be again a static class, so let's delete the start and update and let's delete the model behavior inheritance. Let's add public static uh, keyword before the class and this will be our class and we will want to find here walls surrounding our dungeon. To do that, let's create a public static method void, uh, so let's return nothing, void, and let's call it create walls. We are going to pass here a hash set of vector to int, which are the floor positions, and we are going to pass here our tile map visualizer, let's call it tile map visualizer. Great. And this will be responsible for uh, placing walls on our tile map. For now, we are not going to bother with corners, and let's call var basic wall positions maybe equals, and we are going to call find wall or maybe walls in directions, and we are going to pass our floor positions, and we are going to pass the list of directions. So direction two D dot cardinal directions list great we are going to alt enter on this method and generate it in our class let's rename our newly created method arguments we can keep floor positions but let's rename the list of directions to the directions list okay or maybe direction list in here we are going to create a new hash set of type vector to int again just for the purpose of removing the duplicates and we are going to call it wall positions equals new hash set great what we are going to do is call for each loop tab tab var tab position again press tab to move to the collections and rename it to floor positions so we are using the hash set that we have received for every position we are going to call for each var tab direction tab again call it direction list so for each direction we are going to call var neighbor position equals and we are going to add the, the position from the first for each loop plus the direction so we are checking the position and if this position is in our floor positions or rather if our floor positions doesn't contain the neighbor position this means uh, that we are considering a position near our floor tile that is not on floor tiles list which means that it must be a wall so if this is equal to false then we know that we have a wall so what we can do is call wall positions dot add and we can add the neighbor position and this way we are going to find all the positions near our floor tiles that are not on the floor positions which are simply all the wall positions and this will only work in the cardinal directions for the corners so in, for the diagonal directions we will need to create another algorithm but we will go for it in the uh, at the end of the tutorial for now let's create the basic walls just to see what we have let's return our wall positions hash set great and what we can do now is in the create wall methods we are going to loop for each again var tab position in basic wall positions and it will give us an error because our find walls in directions return an object instead we want to return hash set of vector to ints great 
So now it should work. The return value is correct. And we can iterate through it. And we are going to call our tile map visualizer.paint. And we are going to call maybe paint single basic wall. Okay. And let's pass the position. Great. Now we are going to refactor this method later in the tutorial. Alt enter on it and select generate this method. And we are going to right click on it and go to the definition. Great. Now we are in the tile map visualizer class. Now let's slide up and let's create a new. Uh, actually, we can add to our floor tile. Let's add comma and let's call it wall top. This will be an, our new tile base. And what we are going to do is simply paint it using our paint single basic wall. Uh, but our paint single tile requires a tile map. Preferably, we would like to keep our walls on a separate tile map. So let's slide that up and let's add a new wall tile map. Okay. Now we can go back to our paint single basic wall and we are going to call simply paint single tile which is the method that we have created previously. Let's pass wall tile map as the tile map. Let's pass our wall top tile as the tile to paint. And let's pass our position as the position at which we want to paint our tile. Great. Now, one last step that we will need to take is to visit our simple random walk dungeon generator class. I have it open in Visual Studio. And after we paint our floor positions, we are going to call in the run procedural generation our wall generator dot create walls and we are going to pass to it our floor positions and the tile map visualizer reference and this will be it now let's go back to unity make sure that you save the scripts you can use ctrl shift s to save all the scripts because i have seen that i didn't save the wall generator so if you save all the scripts, let's go back to Unity. Get it right. Now what we will want to do first is select our grid in the hierarchy, right click on it, to the objects and create a tile map. Let's call it wall or walls maybe. And now we can select our tile map visualizer from the hierarchy, drag our wall style map as the wall tile map. And for the wall top, let's select a tile and we should have wall top one, for example. Now we should be able to select our simple random walk dungeon generator, create it, and you can see that it is surrounded by wall tiles. And this is great. Now this looks much better. We can s uh, swap the random walk parameters for the big dungeon, for example, create it. And as you can quickly find out, we are not deleting the old walls, so this creates a bit of a mess. So let's go to our tile map visualizer, let's click those three dots and edit the script. And in the clear, let's add to our wall tile map and let's clear all tiles on it as well. Okay, now let's go back to Unity. Great. Again, let's select simple random walk dungeon generator, generate it. And now all the spaces which are inaccessible are surrounded by walls and the floor tiles are accessible through the walls, uh, through the floor. So this is great. Now, of course, we could also add colliders to our walls. We could also ensure that we can show our character in front of this wall that is visible from our camera. But if we have, for example, our tile map, let's go to sprites, dungeons, characters and tile set. And we could possibly make our character go behind this wall. And this is beyond the scope of this tutorial. If you want to learn more about it and support this YouTube channel, I encourage you to check out my Udemy course about creating a 2D shooter in Unity. It contains a lot of information that might be useful to add characters to your randomly generated dungeon. The link is in the description. In the next video, as I have previously mentioned, I would like to create a way to make a couple of rooms created, uh, collected with corridors and for this, we are going to tweak our simple random walk so that it creates corridors instead of rooms so that we, have, we can create multiple rooms near those corridors to have a much bigger dungeon or a dungeon with multiple rooms. And that's what we are going to tackle in the next video. 
See you there.